pros and cons of using Kubernetes over ECS. And uh, they're, they're just definitely pros and cons, right? Uh, and it, you got to first look at this from your organization's perspective and what you're trying to solve and what you need, your needs are. Um, hey, if your entire team is using ECS or has used ECS in the past, they love it. It works for their mental model for how to do cloud operations and, and you need to make this decision on what to do. Use what your team knows and understands. And if, if they want to use ECS, go with ECS. Kubernetes, you know, it's a whole different beast. I'd like to say ECS is like Kubernetes training wheels. It gets you starting to think about how to have a consistent platform to deploy your applications. Uh, but it is very limited by comparison to Kubernetes. Let me give you some examples of that. I like to think about Kubernetes as being a uh, framework for consistent cloud operations. And it's a framework because you can extend it with your own custom resources, uh, basically configurations that describe something you wanna achieve. And then you can have your own operators that operate on those uh, CRDs and carry out some complex business logic for how to operate. So you have built-in uh, capabilities like deployments and uh, secrets and config maps these primitives, but you could create your own abstract concept of what it is to do a blue-green rollout. In fact, that's exactly what Argo CD does. Is it, as an operator, you can uh, it enables this ability to have a, a rollout custom resource. And this is where, like in ECS land, you're you're a little bit at the mercy of what AWS provides. So AWS code deploy will be kind of helping you do something similar to what you could do with uh, uh, rollouts and in Argo CD. Um, but the difference is that's fully managed by Amazon. Now, if you want to create your own custom resource that manages uh, some you know, Mongo database uh, cluster and failover and promotion or something like that, uh, how would you do that with ECS? How would you do that with Terraform? Well, you don't even get started with Terraform. In Terraform, what you would do is you would write your own provider and somehow run that provider on like a schedule or something. Uh, you would write maybe a Lambda that manages it. And this is where the, the really crazy Rube Goldberg apparatus of Snowflake, uh, of Snowflake Rube Goldberg apparatuses start. Versus in Kubernetes, this operator pattern is formalized. That's why the, the ecosystem is growing so incredibly rapidly. And there's a whole marketplace for finding all of these operators to do stuff for you. I feel like with ECS, you're treating everything like infrastructure and less like a platform. With Kubernetes, you truly are just building this platform. And then the tools you use on the platform are up to the end user. You might be using, some people might be using Customize, some are using Helm, some are using Argo CD, some are using Helm file. Like it doesn't matter, it's a platform. So, yeah. That, I, yeah. I was just gonna say that I've, I've made an analogy before that I believe in, in my opinion, Kubernetes itself is actually like, is a cloud that may run on top of another cloud, but it is its own cloud environment yeah. in and of itself. Like if you think about it that way, because it has, yeah, it has so many things for like dealing with cloud, like, um, you know, functions yeah. and utility computing and all of that, that that's how you should view it probably. Yeah. It, it, it just struck a chord. Like I remember when I first uh, got my head around Kubernetes many years ago and I thought, oh man, this is so brilliant. It's, it's Google's Trojan horse into every cloud environment for dominance. Just like Android was their Trojan ho horse into the mobile uh, ecosystem as providing an operating system. And it's interesting because if we take a step even further back to uh, earlier versions of uh, AWS and cloud infrastructure and how it was managed, it was very much, how can we create a normalizing layer outside of the cloud and the cloud APIs? And that's when companies like RightScale came out and build platforms for that. And yeah, I don't know where right scale is today, but 
they're, they're no longer needed anymore, let's say. So when you're using, and look, we love Terraform. We use Terraform a lot, but using Terraform is a lot of this still like, how do we manage the cloud from outside the cloud versus Kubernetes gives you an, a uh, level playing field once you're operating inside of that cloud so you can just deploy your apps consistently inside of there. I think, was it the question still on the ECS, right, versus Kubernetes? Yeah, exactly. There's some, like, management, like, as far as the controllers and other things that ECS doesn't have. I mean, you could compensate adding Fargate to it, but um, a lot of the issues with ECS, they've been met with third-party open-source products to compensate for the lack of features that ECS has um, in contrast yeah. to what Kate's have. And I, I always look at also Kate's, I mean, Kate's is, like, the abstraction, but um, if you look what you had to do before, it's like to do kind of the rollouts and the rolling updates and the user draining and all that stuff was basically a black art and it was different per company. Yep. And so Kubernetes like unifies all those processes that would be just really hard to do if you'd manage your own, you know, Rails app with your copy strano and your own homegrown code, um, spaghetti, you know, bubblegum yeah. scripts. Um, and there's just nothing else I think that that's out there that really succeeded that offers is maybe Nomad, um, but ASG especially for state like in contrast to like state with stateful sets Kubernetes there's nothing like it out there that I know of um, ASGs and also Google's managed infrastructure groups can't manage stateful sets because they're state and Kubernetes does that I don't know if ECS could handle that as far as the state goes. Um, exactly. For web apps, maybe they don't care about that, but they do get a lot of that user draining and all those features. Yeah, exactly. There's this whole ecosystem that is missing because everything in e ECS world is pretty much a snowflake to the organization and the company versus everything in Kubernetes. That's why there's an ecosystem of hundreds of operators that everyone's collaborating on doing. It's beautiful. Okay, we heard on operators. <laughs> operators I is a double-edged sword. <laughs> That's yeah, it's a source. Okay, okay, fair enough. Operators is a sore subject. I think. Yeah. Good luck getting the work and uh, CRDs upgrade it. Yeah, well, exactly. The S still C of an operator. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a the promise of that has not yet been delivered on. It's been a, a historically uh, sad story. Uh, Let's like say cough Prometheus Prometheus operators upgrade cough. Yeah, Prometheus Operator, uh, Istio has been a pain uh, doing major upgrades there. Prometheus Operators, um, yeah, you name it. Any any kind of operator where you can't just uh, uninstall it and reinstall it uh, at a minimum <laughs> uh, was a pain. And the gist of it is that basically operators are extending your platform and it's difficult. There's no way right now to run multiple versions of the same operator in your cluster Um to do a smooth rollout. And that's why using operators today is a little bit scary if you are treating it as a platform and you can't do blue green clusters. So thank you for be, uh, yeah, holding it, keeping me honest. So Kubernetes is, is like cooking your own meal into your own kitchen. You can very easily cut your hands and make your house blow up. Yeah. ECS is like Uber Eats. You just yes. get delivered food. <laughs> you like it or you don't like it. Yeah, And like, let's be serious. Somebody that has to decide between ECS and Kubernetes is not going to run operators. Operators are an in-depth topic that is opinionated and I will keep it at that. Yeah. If you can it's get not, away it's with- It's not entry-level Kubernetes stuff. Yeah. Like if you can get away with ECS, awesome. Do that. You're going to have to stress about so many fewer things. It's yeah. awesome. Yes. If that is not enough, if you need to customize intense stuff, sure, go for Kubernetes. Also, ECS and Kubernetes are two different things. Because, like, what are we talking about? ECS on EC2s? I don't really like that. ECS with Fargate? Awesome. Yes. Kubernetes with self-managed nodes? That's intense. Kubernetes with Fargate, with Fargate is a different thing. So yeah. there are options. If you can do it in ECS, again, start with ECS. It is so much easier. You don't have to stress every three months that you have to do an upgrade. A lot of organizations are not ready for that. They are yeah. not at that level. And yeah. that's okay. They, you have one, well, one-ish 
clear way of doing releases and upgrades in ECS. That's it. You don't have to decide between 300 different operators that all do GitOps <laughs> and what the fuck is even GitOps. Yeah. It's easier and we shouldn't diminish the importance of that. The fact that ECS is easier is a big advantage. Not everybody needs to, I don't know, scale to 10 million containers and 500 clusters and manage it all with 300 different open source projects. Some people do, that's totally valid. But a lot of people don't. And just going to Kubernetes because it's cool, it's going to be super, 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 super expensive. And I say this as a Kubernetes consultant that is paid obscene amounts of money to fix broken clusters and broken companies. If you can go with ECS, go with ECS. If uh, there comes a time when you need to migrate from ECS to Kubernetes because you have a service that is, I don't know, that requires custom scaling on 500 different metrics with super uh, custom logic on that, you cannot easily do that in CloudWatch. Kubernetes might be a better option. Awesome. Move that service to Kubernetes. But you don't have to. You can start with something easier and then move on to Kubernetes if you need it. There's also the advantage of open source software that you discussed. Instead of your company writing your own ML platform on ECS or EC2s and spending six months getting that out and then maintaining it at the cost of, I don't know, a meal a year and everybody joining your company having to upskill into that platform, that is terrible. Or you can go to Kubernetes and you can use one of the many very popular ML platforms where you can just take advantage of that. You can work with the community. New employees will already know it. The patterns are there. You can contribute. You get free features developed for a product that you're using. And those features are developed by other companies. You get free new features. That's awesome. Instead of you creating an ML framework inside your company. That's a bad idea. You should be taking advantage of the awesome open source software that's on Kubernetes. But if you're running a web service, throw it in ECS on Fargate. Go have a coffee, relax, meditate yeah. a bit. See your, your, your monolith does not need Kubernetes. I think the last, I think the, the last argument is, you know, the, the whole vendor locking thing, right? Um, uh, you know, uh, if, you're, yeah. if you're in ECS and you've spent a ton of time with it and you've built it out a ton and you're invested in it and Amazon tries, you know, Amazon goes and raises the price of ECS by 20%, you're over a barrel. You have no choice. They're, you're just going to, you know, take that what they... That is such a terrible argument that I yeah. cannot stand it. If, we all definitely should write our own operating systems because what if Linux decides to kill Linux or something like that? It's not going to happen. It's unlikely. AWS never raise prices. If they're due, they're going to be in a way... <laughs> way deep hole and the cost of doing that yourself the cost of running your own kubernetes platform the cost of running your own s3 the cost of running your own database on ec2 instead of using rds or aurora that's a lot it's it become locking the locking argument makes sense for a couple companies in a couple industries financial industries you are uh, obligated to run in at least one cloud because you're considered public infrastructure. Valid argument. Not going to deny it. But if you, if a web company has to decide that, they have to do a cost analysis. And when you're comparing yourself with AWS and what you can do in terms of cost with your 100 engineers and somebody mentions lock-in, that is not valid. The cloud is not your enemy. They're your partner. And that's Otherwise, a, that's a- we all should be building our own OS. It's a totally valid argument. I guess my point was, you know, Kubernetes, you can run a Kubernetes cluster anywhere and it's mostly the same, you know, mostly versus being it is a, <laughs> it is a, it's a bespoke, it's a bespoke solution, you know, in ECS. Yeah. With RDS, add- you, you mentioned RDS and stuff. RDS yeah. is just a, a, a MySQL database or a Postgres database or whatever, right? I mean, it, it, they, they're offering the ability to run it in a managed way but it's still just Postgres or whatever, you know, versus ECS is a bespoke solution compared to one that's an open platform that can run anywhere. 
Yeah, I just I just wanted to jump in as a kind of jokingly with um, yeah, Kubernetes mostly the same everywhere, except for network, except for storage, except for load balancers, um, and also yeah. anything that's going to have to integrate to the back end, um, which are going to integrate differently with annotations or whatever, depending I on the drivers that are available for that integration and provision. Yeah. Um, oh, um, for the, before that, there was a, one comment about like, um, you know, do RDF and all this stuff. Well, actually, strangely, in my company, we're doing our own bare metal just because of the cost of AWS. Um, and we actually deliver our own database. So we use our own database. Um, but we love Kubernetes because the stateful sets. Um, it's nothing like it out there. And um, yeah, so we're, you know, we're doing like kind of a one type of tier set of customers. Um, our database now is going to support multi-tenant and it just makes sense to lower the cost um, because of the automation we have of Terraform and Kubernetes and Ansible. Cool.